Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap-up. That's right, everybody. Welcome to the weekly pop culture wrap-up here on Pop Culture Philosophers. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies, but first of all, i got to give a big shout-out to David Hatch. David has been our longest-running supporter over at patreon.com slash pcp. He's our he was our first patron. He's our longest running patron. David, I really, really do appreciate it. I appreciate the financial support. I appreciate the input that you give as a board member of Pop Culture Philosophers over at our Patreon page. I really do appreciate it, the input, the advice, all that stuff. I hope you guys have been paying attention. Those of you on Patreon have been paying attention to the PCP video newsletter that we've been doing over the last week. I think we've hit it like We've done like four, maybe five or six are coming, you know, some more are coming very, very soon. But thank you so much for your support, advice, and everything like that. And if you want to get in on that fun, unlock early access, exclusive videos, and things like that, and have a direct line to me about what you want to see here in the future at Pop Culture Philosophers, join us over at patreon.com slash PCP. So let's get right on into the pop culture wrap up with some comic book news. There's a new Thanos miniseries coming in April just in time for Avengers Endgame. It's going to be written by Tiny Howard with artwork by Ariel Olivetti. So Howard just recently blew us away, I think, at least blew me away with that Captain America annual. Thought that was fantastic stuff. She just recently wrapped up Euthanauts over at IDW. Major things are happening for Howard's career in the industry right now. This is one of them, a Thanos miniseries timed in conjunction with Avengers Endgame. This is going to go back, how far? Back in time to when Thanos first was introduced to Gamora. When he first met Gamora, when that relationship, that, that love-hate relationship first started. So I'm excited to see this relationship explored, definitely the past of this relationship, explored a little bit further. I think Howard's a great pick for that. She sounds very, very excited about the book. Ariel um, Olivetti, we just know, who has wrapped up Death of the Inhumans, with Donny Cates over at Marvel. Really fun stuff, excited for this. Perfectly timed for Avengers Endgame. Um, we got a new Thanos miniseries. From TKO, there's a new book called Sentient coming out, and I'm pointing this one out in particular because TKO is doing some really neat things with publishing, with the way that they give a give away product, with the way that they sample product, with the way that they release product, right? But number one, Sentient is written by Jeff Lemire with artwork by Gabriel Hernandez Walta, who, 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 who did the artwork on the Vision series by Tom King, if you don't know, and lettering by Steve Wands, who is lettering Lemire's Gideon Falls right now. Jeff Lemire is one of the absolute top talents in the industry right now. Walta, an amazing artist. I love his work on Vision. His brief work on Doctor Strange with Donny Cates was really fire. Really cool stuff. Very excited for this. This thing's really cool. Neat little sci-fi story. It's going to be coming out later this year. But what's really cool is how TKO is going to be releasing it. They're going to release it in three forms all at once. So, first of all, the entire story, six issues of it, it's going to be available all at once. It's going to release, bam. If you want to get floppies, if you want to get single-issue comic books, they're going to have a collector's box set with six individual issues for $24.99. If you want to get the trade paperback where it's all collected into one volume, one bound volume, it's going to be $17.99. And if you want to just get the whole thing digitally, it's going to be $14.99. Really interesting way to release it. Think about how television has worked, right? How television has gone from an episode a week or two, right, to just places like Netflix and Amazon just releasing the entire season all at once and people can binge into it. This is a format that I think comic books can really, um, can really get into. Over in Japan, for instance, manga it tears up the shelves, right? Like full complete stories, full complete volumes. That's something the American audience has really never quite gotten into maybe because we're really like just sold on collecting individual issues so i really like this approach by tko to release individual issues and a trade paperback and a digital collection all at once no matter what you prefer there you go and obviously the price breaks are there for if you get on somewhere else let's talk about brian michael bendis on legion of superheroes so brian michael bendis releases whole series of images Excuse me, I believe on his Instagram page or something like that, right? And there's a whole bunch of different things, right? And you can go find that little series of images and like pick and prod and find some neat little little tidbits of information about what could be possibly coming up from Michael Brian Michael Bendis and company over at uh, DC. 
but one of them is the image right there which is obviously a close-up of the legion of superheroes logo the emblem that there's on their flight rings right um so a lot of people are speculating that brian michael bendis is doing legion of superheroes no i think that this is almost near confirmation that jonathan hickman is doing legion of superheroes we know that one of jonathan hickman's favorite superhero titles of all time is legion of superheroes we know that legion of superheroes is something dc wants to do something with especially post doomsday clock we know that brian michael bendis is friends with jonathan hickman and brought him over into marvel by co-writing the secret warriors book with him i really just think that there's too much coincidences there I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in magic in life, right? So there you go. I think that this is this is still just, you know, speculation. But I really, really think that if Hickman's going to do a superhero book in 2019, a lot of us think it's either going to be A, X-Men, or B, Legion of Superheroes. I think this kind of leads us a little bit more into Legion of Superheroes. That's just me. But maybe it's Bendis. That, kind of, that would be cool, too. But man, Jonathan Hickman would make me care for Legion of Superheroes like nobody else ever did. Strange Lands is a new book from Humanoids. Humanoids is going to be run by Mark Wade and John Cassidy. I haven't really talked about them too much here. There have been a couple books announced already. Mark Wade's doing one. Humanoids wants to release this uh, H1 shared universe, right? And they're going to do a free comic book day issue for this year's free comic book day to launch this company to launch this 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 shared universe i should say um strange lands though is something i really want to point out to you because written by magdalene visaggio and uh darcy little badger visaggio one of my favorite writers i think she's one of was one of the up and coming most promising um newish type talents that we got in 2018 her eternity girl book was amazing her vagrant queen book was amazing i love Magdalene Visaggio's work, and I'm excited for more. This seems really, really cool. It's going to have artwork by Koi Fam. It is a shared universe by Humanoids, H1 they're calling it. There will be a free comic book day issue leading into all this, and another book by Mark Wade, and other books, and we'll just see what happens, right? And I'm super excited to see what's going to happen there. Doomsday Clock number nine, delayed. No surprise. It's delayed a week. So it's just a week. It's not really that big of a deal. Previously, when we've talked about Doomsday Clock delays, we've talked about delays of a month or two. So Doomsday Clock number nine slipping from the end of January to the beginning of February. I'm cool with that because the way that number eight left us, man, I know that we're all itching to see what's going to happen next. But I guarantee you that what happens next is not even going to reference probably what happened before. Um, we may get that for another issue or two. But I love Doomsday Clock. Every issue is an event to me. I don't mind the delays. It could be quarterly. I'd be cool with it. I really don't care. Let's go on to some movie and TV news. Very surprising news. Eddie Murphy announced that they're doing a Coming to America 2. Wow. That's super, super cool. Really fun. Coming to America was a great film. Any of you guys... Or gals that grew up in the 80s like I did. I'm sure you watched that movie. I'm sure you have an affinity for it. I love that movie. Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, playing a bunch of different multiple characters. We know that Eddie Murphy is confirmed. Is Arsenio Hall going to be in it? Because he better. What else we got for you? We got the He-Man movie. So they've been trying to do this Masters of the Universe movie for a while. Just signed on two new writers. Art um, uh, Markham and Matt Holloway. Matt Holloway just recently wrote that new Men in Black movie that's coming out this year, and they wrote Iron Man, the John Favreau Iron Man movie with Robert Downey Jr. that launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that's 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 pretty cool. Maybe they'll know what they're doing. That was a, if they can figure out how to to launch the MCU, maybe they can figure out how to launch the MOTCU. Masters of the Cinematic Universe, that's what that is. Anyway, Star Trek IV, done, not happening, pushed, done, shelved, really? I don't know. These are just rumors. Why did this rumor exist? This rumor exists because there's a new Game of Thrones prequel series coming out. They just confirmed that uh, S.J. Clarkson is going to direct the pilot because now she's available. She was just recently, not too long ago, announced as the director, the first female director of a Star Trek film with Star Trek number four. Then they lost Chris Pine, and then we thought they'd get Chris Pine back. They also lost Chris Hemsworth, but that's not as important. But Chris Pine, Kirk, pretty important to a Star Trek TOS, you know, movie in 2019, I think, whenever, you know. Anyway, it seems like this movie's doomed. I've never seen Star Trek Beyond. Maybe that's a problem. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Never saw it. Into Darkness left such a bad taste in my mouth. I really liked the uh, 1999, the 2009 reboot by J.J. Abrams. I thought that was pretty, pretty decent. 
Um, but the second one just never really captured me. I, he I hear that Star Trek Beyond is really, really good. I've been meaning to check it out. It is sad to see this franchise go. But I think maybe this franchise should just live like it did previously. The strength of Star Trek has always been on episodic television. Always. And Discovery blows those Abram films away absolutely right so i'm excited for more discovery i'm excited for this new captain picard show i think star trek needs to focus in on episodic television and get away from movies star trek as much as i love a lot of those movies most of the ones are in fact the ones are really really like a lot of people anyway a lot of people like Rafficon. i love Rafficon, but i love the motion picture anyway i feel like star trek is a, a television thing and maybe they need to focus on that right i don't know hmm. lady sith on disney plus so there's a rumor right now that Disney Plus is going to develop a Lady Sith TV show starring Jamie Alexander. One of the best characters from the Thor movies was Lady Sith. I thought she was amazing. Jamie Alexander really played that role, really nailed it in such small little bits. She was nowhere to be seen in Thor Ragnarok, so it'd be really cool to see her being spotlighted in her own show. We've already seen her over in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for an episode or two, so that would be really cool. I think it would fit right in. Alexander would do a great job. I'm down to see more Lady Sif. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Jamie Alexander should have played Wonder Woman. That's what I think. What do you think? Anyway, that's what we got for you this week. Not a big news week, but we got a lot of big news coming with some new solicitations and things like that. Thank you guys so much for checking out this channel, for checking out this video, for watching this video. And please do like, share, and comment, and subscribe. What do we got coming up here at Pop Culture Philosophers? Well, we're going live tonight. Robbie Rance live tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. We missed last week, and when I skip a week on a live stream, it feels like I haven't talked to y'all in forever. So join me tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time for Robbie Rance Live. We'll be talking about this week's upcoming comic books. We'll be talking about pop culture news, movie news, and a whole lot more. So join us. It's always a fun treat. It's one of my favorite things I do here at Pop Culture Philosophers is the Robbie Rance live stream where I can interact with you guys right there on the spot. You can put me on the spot, things like that, ask me questions, and I love it. I love it so much. Weekly comic book review coming late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, like usual. A new episode of Comics Revisited this Thursday. Patreon supporters already have access to this episode. Me and Brooks revisit X-Men Age of Apocalypse, and it was fun, and the video was fun, and I think you guys should totally check it out. Also, don't forget, join us over at the PCP Army on Facebook, where we do fun little polls that help decide the future of videos for pop culture philosophers and things like that, and we just share memes, have fun things like Catterday, and and First Appearance Friday, and Would You Rather Wednesday, and Toon Tuesday, and Toon Thursday, Movie Monday, and things like that. So join us over at our official Facebook group, PCP Army. Just type it in in the search uh, search bar. You'll find it. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thank you guys for everything. Please do join us, like I said, at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more. And join us at patreon.com slash pcp for, P for PCP video newsletters and more. So thank you guys so much for rocking with us. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. Keep on living. <laughs>